All farmers depend on plants. Some use them as food for animals, and we'll see more of them later. But for others it is the plants themselves that are important. In Britain the plants grown most commonly by farmers other than grass are cereals. Crops like wheat, barley and oats. These plants are all part of the same family as grass and they have developed through thousands of years of selective breeding. Farmers choosing to sow seeds from the plants producing the best and biggest seeds or grain. The cereal crops we grow today are all directly linked to crops grown by farmers in the ancient world thousands of years ago. And although they would be astonished by how they are grown today and the machinery that's used to do it, those ancient farmers would recognise the similarity between farming then and now. Just like farmers today, they had systems for planting or sowing the seed in the soil, caring for the plants while they grew, and then harvesting and drying the crop for storage, so that it doesn't spoil through the winter. If you have a garden, you may have done some of these things yourself, or watch somebody else who has, on a much smaller scale of course. Ancient farmers would also recognise many of the uses to which cereal grains are put today. Wheat that is used for flour to make bread, barley to make malt for beer, and oats used to make porridge. But today these crops are also used in many other foods such as breakfast cereals, biscuits, pizza, cakes and pasta to name but a few. Some of these foods have a very long history or tradition, others are quite new. Some you may have made at home, others will have been made in large factories. Like grass, cereal crops can be grown on many types of land. But farmers get the best crop on good soil by providing the growing plants with the nutrients, water and sunlight they need to grow big and strong. Land that is not too wet in the winter nor too dry in the summer. This type of crop farming with cereals is called arable farming. Crops can be grown year after year on the same land, but this can cause problems. Each crop uses up some of the nutrients the food plants need and growing the same crop can also allow damaging plant diseases to take hold and spread. These can reduce the size of the crop the farmer has to sell or make the crop unsuitable for us to eat. Some plant diseases can even make the crops dangerous to eat. One way arable farmers defend their crops against these problems is to have a crop rotation. This means growing different types of crop each year including some that help to put nutrients back into the soil and that don't suffer from the same types of diseases as others in the rotation. On good deep soils farmers might have a rotation of wheat one year, barley the next followed by potatoes, sugar beet or beans and then back to wheat. Or they might have a rotation with cereal crops and vegetables such as carrots, onions or cabbages. Others on soils that are not so good might grow oilseed rape. This crop, which is the same plant family as cabbages, is the one with the yellow flowers which brightens up the countryside each spring. Rapeseed can be crushed to squeeze out valuable oils that can be used for cooking. Special environmentally friendly lubricants for chainsaws, oil rigs and cable cars, and even to replace diesel oil and petrol used as fueling cars, lorries and of course tractors. As well as crop rotations, arable farmers sometimes spray their plants with extra food to encourage growth. Traditionally, farmers fertilise their fields with manure made from composted animal dung and bedding straw on their land. The manure is known as fertiliser. Farmers also plough the remains of other plants and crops back into the soil. This helps to recycle nutrients. Sometimes farmers may even grow special crops like clover just to fertilise the land when they are ploughed back into the soil. Many farmers still use these techniques to fertilise their soils, but most modern farmers also use concentrated artificial fertilisers. These contain the same plant nutrients as traditional manure, but in a more concentrated form. They can be spread much more evenly to give a more even crop, and be mixed to provide for the needs of the specific crops and soils. They also have the benefit, unlike traditional manure, that when they are spread, they don't smell. Most modern farmers also spray their crops with special chemicals to give their plants even more protection from diseases, insects and weeds. The sprays they use have been carefully designed to do particular jobs, like protecting against fungal diseases that damage plants in damp weather, 
preventing insects which can damage crops by eating them or spreading viruses, and preventing the growth of weeds. Farmers are very careful to optimise the use of chemicals and ensure they don't use too much. Some are even using expensive global positioning systems on their tractors to make sure they only spray the minimum amount of spray required on the specific areas with a problem. Some arable farmers even have special watering systems called irrigators to help their crops to grow. In Britain these are used on crops needing a lot of water which are more valuable like potatoes and vegetables. In other countries where there is little or no rain, irrigation is needed to get most plants to grow. You might ask why farmers take so much trouble with their plants. Of course one reason is that it helps them to grow more and better crops, and that can mean more money. But there are other reasons too. As we saw earlier, in this country we have a wide range of foods available in plentiful supply many grown in this country, but others from abroad. In some countries people are not so lucky. For them the failure of a crop can mean the difference between life and death. Perhaps you have seen pictures of people in Africa whose crops have failed because of droughts, diseases or plagues of insects. In the worst cases this can cause famines, where there isn't enough food to feed all the people. In Britain, like other developed countries, we're lucky because our farmers, through a mix of traditional and modern techniques, are able to grow a steady supply of the main foods we eat. And, like other developed countries, we're rich enough to buy more food from abroad, even if supplies do run short. But we don't have to look very far back in history to see the problems that crop failures can cause. Back in the 19th century, hundreds of thousands of people died in Ireland when a fungus called potato blight ruined the potato crop on which many poor people relied for their food. In parts of America too, the Dust Bowl of the 1930s drove many small farmers from their land. Their crops failed because the moisture and nutrients in the soil were all used up, allowing the wind to blow the soil away. So the skill of farmers in looking after their soil and keeping their crops healthy and growing strongly is important to us all. Cereals, potatoes and other arable crops are not the only plants farmers grow. Those with land on the best soils can grow a much wider range of food plants, such as salad crops or asparagus or soft fruit like strawberries. Other farmers have invested in large greenhouses to grow plants that wouldn't normally do well in the British climate, or to get better and more consistent crops from those that can, but are more sensitive to bad weather like cucumbers and tomatoes. In areas that have poor quality soils, some farmers may even grow trees for forestry. Whatever plants the farmer grows, from cereals to apple trees, the same principles apply. They need to be planted in the right type of soil, with enough sunshine, water and nutrients to help them grow and they need to be protected from diseases, pests and weeds.